uh, we are so blessed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. 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 That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Again, thank you all for being with us tonight. We love each one of you. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Brother, Brother Fred. As Sherry said, the title of the message tonight is Troubling the Troublers. And uh, I, I, what I mean by troubling the troubles or, or troublers are those things that trouble you. And we're not talking about people tonight. We're talking about things like uh, fear and anxiety and despair and discouragement and things like that. And so those are the things that the fire of God will burn up. When you uh, see Jesus revealed in fire, uh, then he gives you rest and he is the one who troubles the troublers. There, this particular verse is uh, from the Passion Translation and I'm going to ask Sherry to read it. This is going to be the core verse uh, for tonight, but it shows us that we can have rest when Jesus is revealed uh, in fire. So go ahead, Sherry. This is 2 Thessalonians 1, verses 6 through 8. It is right and just for God to trouble your troublers and give rest to the troubled, both to you and to us, at the unveiling of the Lord Jesus from heaven with his messengers of power within a flame of fire. Hallelujah. I love that verse. You know, this uh, verse is a prophecy. When, when the Lord Jesus Christ is revealed in fire, then he's going to trouble your troublers. And we're going to look at that. And again, it's not about people, but it's about the things that the enemy brings against us. Uh, anxiety, uh, fear, sickness, disease, anything that the enemy uh, is working against you. Uh, when you find the scripture that brings life and brings the fire of God into your life, uh, mm -hmm. it will uh, free you and destroy the things that trouble you. It, it's a very simple message tonight, uh, but there it is in scripture. And, and that phrase, see, became alive to me. Trouble the, the troublers. troublers I mean. and, and it's because uh, Jesus is being revealed in fire. Now, I want to talk about prophecy uh, for a moment because you can find a word of prophecy like that in the uh, scriptures, and you can say, well, that will happen, uh, let's say, when Jesus comes, uh, and that might be in 10 years or 20 years or whatever, uh, but it also, a prophecy is not just a one-time thing. It doesn't just happen and limited just to one thing. It can be revealed over and over and over again in our lives. We take hold of it and receive it by faith and say, that belongs to me. So when you have problems, and let me just give you a couple of examples uh, to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say when Sherry... Uh, was diagnosed with cancer. The doctor said she was going to die. The Lord revealed a scripture to her, one verse. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us what that verse was, Sherry. It's Psalms 118, verse 17, that says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. See that when that one verse became alive to her, it was a fiery presence yeah. of the Lord in her life. Because Jesus is the word of God. See, John chapter one, verse one says, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the was with God and the word was God. And so the word has always been, the word of God has always existed and it's always been God. And then the word was manifested in the flesh and we know him as Jesus. So the word, hallelujah, mm -hmm. the word is Jesus. And so you can say, when the word is revealed to me, it becomes alive to me. It becomes on fire. And I want to give a verse here and then she will read it. 
It's uh, Luke uh, 24, 32. And Jesus was walking with some disciples one day, and he was opening up the scriptures to them. In other words, bringing life to the scriptures. And the scriptures say are not supposed to be just a dead written word, but they're, mm. become, they're to become alive. And let's see what happens when they become alive to us. Okay. They said one to another, were our hearts not burning within us when he was speaking to us on the road while he was explaining the scriptures to us? Okay, so when the scriptures become alive, what happens? Well, there's a fire that begins to grow on the inside of you. See, if you've never studied the scriptures, if the scriptures have never become alive to you, then you don't have that fire within you. But you can begin studying the scriptures. Let's say you've got uh, uh, an infirmity in your body. Well, mm. go look in the scriptures. See what the scriptures say about that. And when you find a, a verse like Sherry found, because the Holy Spirit mm. revealed it to you, once that verse is revealed to you, then it becomes a fire within you. That's what we're really talking about today is a fire within you that will burn up the attacks of the enemy against you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And bring victory. Victory every time. Now, thanks be unto God who always Twice. causes us to triumph. Amen. In Christ Jesus and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge. So all, you can expect victory in every area. Hallelujah. But don't just sit around and wait for it to fall on you. Look for it. Find the scripture that gives you life. See, uh, when my son was on drugs uh, and, and he was uh, in, in bad shape with, yeah. with drugs, he was manufacturing drugs and, and uh, distributing drugs and taking drugs and, and doing all kinds of evil. Well, this, the Lord gave me a verse, a, a scripture. It was actually two verses. It was Isaiah uh, 49, verses 24 and 25. And, and it's talking about my son. See, it's a verse. Now, mm -hmm. it, it obviously occurred one time in history, but a prophecy, a promise, it, anybody can go and receive it by the uh, guidance of the Holy Spirit. And so this verse became alive to me, and it was talking about delivering your son. And it says, though your son is a legal captive, I will deliver him. Well, I shared that verse with my son, and uh, he that very day that he was uh, uh, put in jail by the police for driving uh, uh, while intoxicated, and uh, they had eight years of prison charges against him. Eight years. But remember the verse. What did it say? Though your son is a legal captive, I will deliver him. Well, today he has served out his parole. For probation. And, uh, for probation. He never served a day in prison because God said he was going to deliver him. See, that verse then... The, those verses, Isaiah 49, verses 24 and 25, became alive to me. It became alive to him. He remembers uh, from this day. And so that it, once it becomes alive, it's a fire. Because we know from Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I believe it's verse 20, uh, uh, chapter 20, verse 9, says that um, his word is a fire hammer and a, and a hammer. So it's a fire and a hammer. So the word is a fire. So when it becomes alive to you, that's when it becomes a fire. And it became that verse, those two verses became alive to me. It became alive to my son and he was delivered and he has finished his probation and he never served a day in prison because God said he was going to deliver my son. Well, that was there for me, but it's there for you. Same amen, verse, amen. same verse that God gave Sherry is there available for you. So when the Holy Spirit 
reveals a word to you. It becomes alive to you. It becomes fire mm -hmm. within you. Jeremiah said, I had a fire shut up, up in, in my, my bones. bones. So it's an inward fire we're talking about today. And then sickness cannot stay. Uh, and, and like in Sherry's situation, cancer couldn't stay mm -hmm. because she had a fire within her when the word was revealed to her. So it's talking about God's going to give us rest when we find Jesus being revealed to us in his scriptures by a flame of fire. And like I say, uh, it's going to happen. Any person mm -hmm. can catch these verses and that will happen. It will become alive to them. Now, there will be other uh, throughout the ages, those verses uh, and promises of God that uh, people can catch hold of them. So it's not just a one-time thing. A lot of people look at the verses and say, well, it's just a, uh, a written word. And it, it, once, once it happens, well, then it'll happen one time. But no, it doesn't just happen one time. It happens every time people catch hold of it. And then it becomes a fire, becomes alive to them. And, and many of the verses have become alive to me and a fire to me. And I have a fire within me, a passion within me. See, that's the translation we were looking at, the passion translation. Hallelujah. We have a passion for the Lord. Have, have you been in the word of God enough that, that the, word, the words become alive to you and a fire to you. Well, it's not just the fire of the word, but then there's a, a passage in Timothy I want Sherry to read uh, that, that talks about it's our responsibility to stir up the fire. And you might think, well, it's my pastor. I want my pastor to stir up the fire. No, it's your individual responsibility. It's my responsibility. It's Sherry's responsibility. Each of us has a responsibility to stir up the fire within us. So I'm going to ask Sherry to read this verse. Yes, and I'm going to read this verse. But I just saw something as Brother Fred was bringing that forth. Uh, I just saw, uh, I had a vision, and it's for at least two people that are watching tonight, that are listening tonight. And I saw uh, uh, this creature. Uh, with his hands around your throat, around your throat. And when Brother Fred began to minister the word, uh, all of a sudden I saw the, the, the hands come off of your throat, come off of your throat and release you. And you were free of any type of uh, throat issues. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, myself. Jesus. Hallelujah. Second uh, Timothy uh, 1, verses 5 through 7. I often think of that genuine faith of yours, a faith that first appeared in your grandmother, Lois, and in Eunice, your mother, and is now, I am convinced, in you as well. Okay, let's just, because, pause. Oh, let's okay. just pause here for a minute. And what he's saying is that faith is passed down. You can have faith. Uh, Jerry can pass down faith to you. Your parents can pa pass down faith to you. It's something that uh, connects generations, uh, connects uh, one group of people to another group of people. That faith can, can be passed on. And what Paul wrote this letter to Timothy and said, I know your grandmother. Mm -hmm. I know your mother. And they were people of faith and, and they imparted uh, faith into you. They, they, they gave you something that's spiritual. Uh, you might think, well, my parents uh, are, have given me a, um, an inheritance of wealth, but, but this is an inheritance of faith. And, and so it's been, it's been given on and it's passed on. And Sherry and I, why do we teach? Because we want to pass on uh, the word of God, Amen. but the word of God brings faith. So when you hear what we're saying, we're imparting faith to you. We're not just teaching we are imparting faith to you. Amen. Okay, go ahead and read the rest of it then. Because you have this faith, I now remind you to stir up that inner fire which God gave you at your ordination. 
For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. Oh, and wait a minute, read it out of another translation. Again, it's about this inner fire. Okay. And it applies to you. This is not just about Timothy, uh, just a dead written word. This is a, a word that can become alive to you if you receive it, if you grab hold of it with your faith. Right. Glory to God that you can have this same inner fire that Paul is writing about here. Go ahead. Jay. This is from the Amplified Version. That is why I remind you to fan the flame the gracious gift of God, that inner fire, the special endowment, which is in you through the laying on of hand, my hands with those of the elders at your ordination. Okay. So what I'm saying here is that each of you have a fire within you. And where did that fire come from? It came when you received the word of God, or this scripture or that scripture, when you began to receive different scriptures, then there was a flame, a fire that became uh, or birthed within you. And so you carry a fire. Now, it's your responsibility to keep that fire burning. It's not the preacher's uh a responsibility each it's a responsibility for each of us when we receive the fire the word of god as a living word uh and it's i'm talking about a scripture upon scripture line upon line mm -hmm. it's not oh i say the whole bible lots of people say oh the whole bible is holy and i receive all of it no you have to do it scripture by scripture talk about line upon line and so yeah. as you st and see we're also told to study the word so when you study the word and the holy spirit brings something to life to you and you say whoa that's alive to me mm -hmm. then that that fans that flame of fire within you we all have a fire within us but we have to keep fanning the flame we have to and how do we fan the flame well we have to be in the presence of the lord we have to be studying the word and, and, and praying in the spirit. All of these things cause that fire to get brighter and brighter. I, I, I've seen uh, since uh, we've been with you, I've seen the fire within you Amen. Uh, grow brighter and brighter. A and that's what it's supposed to do. In each one of you. A and it's because we're all in a fire here and, and that fire is catching the fire is catching. Hallelujah. See, if you just go uh, and and just go from to work, to home, to home, work, to home, to work, to home, and, and you never pick up your Bible or you never have a Bible study, th then that flame begins to go out. But when you have a passion for the Lord Jesus Christ, that fire will uh, begin to ignite and br burn brighter and brighter. And that's what that's what the Lord is wanting. That's what, by the Holy Spirit, he's saying each of us has a responsibility to fan that flame, to make the fire within us. You have a fire within you, but you need to make it brighter and brighter and hotter and hotter. And how do you do that? Stay in the presence of believers uh, who operate in faith and stay around believers and around people who will encourage you in the word. And then also you study the word and you begin to learn the word. And when the word is revealed to you, see what it said, when this, when Jesus is revealed to you, or I could say when the word is revealed to you, when a scripture is revealed to you in blazing fire, then that's going to trouble your troublers oh, or those who trouble you. And I'm not talking about I'm not talking about people here. I'm talking about the work of the enemy because we know from Ephesians 6, verse 12, that we do not struggle Uncle. against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in yeah, heavenly I'm, places. Yes. That's all demonic. And, all, and the demonic forces try to bring all kinds of, of negative things against you 
uh, of anxiety, fear, depression, despair, uh, hopelessness, uh, sickness, mm -hmm. disease. All, all of those things come from the enemy. See, over here is God. God is good. God only has good and he gives good and mm -hmm. his gifts are per good and perfect gifts. But on the other side, there's a you have an enemy. Our struggle is against power, principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay, so I want to go ahead and, and look at a couple of examples about when the fire comes, the troublers, those who make trouble are burned up themselves in the fire. Now, we'll be looking at actual people uh, in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, we're talking about demonic forces bringing things against us. So let's look, first of all, uh, and I'm just going to quickly go through a couple of stories, and, and 1 Kings 18, and that's talking about there was a time when there were evil kings in the nation of Israel, and they served uh, the idol Baal, and they had 400 uh, prophets of Baal, so-called prophets, but they're really their false prophets, and uh, so Elijah, the prophet of God, challenged them uh, to competition who could, whose God could answer by fire. And so those 400 uh, prophets, they uh, danced around and uh, cried out and prayed to their God, and uh, but they never got any fire. And then uh, Elijah uh, made up the altar uh, for the evening sacrifice, and he put a, an oxen on it and put poured water on it and and, and uh, prayed a simple prayer, and the fire fell. So when the fire fell, it uh, we know that it consumed the oxen and the and all the stuff on the altar, but it troubled those people who were troubling the nation of Israel. Those were troublemakers, those false prophets, and so. Uh, uh, Elijah had them all killed. He killed all of them, 400 mm. false prophets. Now, we don't do that in the New Testament anymore. We don't do, we don't kill people. It's a, our struggle is against demonic forces, against dark forces. Mm. Uh, and, and But we see there in an example of how it's supposed to happen when the fire falls. And it's the same thing in your life. Yeah. When the fire falls. When Jesus is revealed in fire, he's going to trouble the ones who trouble you, and he's going to give you rest. Oh, Ooh, hallelujah. Yeah. Isn't that exciting? Good. Let me give you another example. Uh, in the book of Daniel, the third chapter of Daniel, uh, the king's name was Nebuchadnezzar, and he made a great golden idol that looked uh, somewhat like him, and he told all the people that they had to bow down to an idol. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not supposed to put a false idol in front of God, not to have any gods in front of our God. And so uh, the people came and reported to the king that uh, the what they're called the children, the Hebrew children, or the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wouldn't bow down. Now, that's really important. They would not compromise. They would not put another God before their God. And uh, so Nebuchadnezzar got troubled. He, it bothered him that they wouldn't do what he wanted done. And so he's, he was going to throw them in a fiery furnace. So he had these big, strong men uh, bind up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego mm -hmm. and, and make the fire in the furnace hotter than it was supposed to even uh, be, uh, very hot. Uh, now, when the people threw the, threw the Hebrews in the fire, those men died. They were burned up. So it's those were the troublers, the ones who threw them in the fire. They were troubled. It says, <laughs> hallelujah, yeah. God's going to trouble the, your troublers. Yeah. Yeah. 
So the ones who threw them in the fire, they were burned up. That was troubling the troublers. Now they were they had they were bound up. They were thrown in the fire. Here the king is looking at them, and he threw three people in and uh, all bound up. But but then all of a sudden he got troubled. <laughs> God, you in trouble with your troublers. Well, Nebuchadnezzar was the one responsible for them being in the fire, and it troubled him. It troubled him. Uh, and he said, did not we throw three men in the fire, and weren't they bound? And now I see four men yeah. in the fire. And they're walking and around. They're walking around. They're free. And, and, and so it doesn't bother them. Oh, so Nebuchadnezzar was the troubler, and it troubled him that... that uh, the Son of God showed up. See, when the Son in of fire. God is, is revealed, uh, and he's going to be revealed in fire. Whenever the Son of God is revealed, he's revealed in fire, and, and it troubled the, the troubler. And, and uh, so he said, whoa, 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 uh, we're, wherever. I know that the God of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and uh, Bendigo is a, a true God, and so we're going to worship him. Uh, hallelujah so the god troubled the troublers hallelujah uh, the, the people that troubled shadrach meshach and abendigo they had their own trouble uh and, and if you don't like the words trouble the troublers that that it also says in another translation afflict the afflictors <laughs> so, so if you got somebody some evil force afflicting you well let's just say god's going to afflict the afflictors but I like uh, trouble, trouble the troublers. I, I'm encouraged by by that verse. I want Sherry to read it again. I think it's such a Thank an you. incredible Thank verse. You. The first one. Yes. Mm. It is right and just for God to trouble your troublers and give rest to the troubled, both to you and to us, at the unveiling of the Lord Jesus from heaven with his messengers of power within a flame of fire. When you Hallelujah. see Jesus revealed in your life, Hallelujah. he will be reveal, revealed in fire uh, with power and that will give you rest because you know that he's giving trouble to the ones who have troubled you, the demonic forces that have troubled you. You don't have to put up with sickness. You don't have to put up with infirmity. You don't have to put up with weakness, being tired, uh, being oppressed, being, being depressed, anxious. being anxious uh, about things. You, you don't have to put up with any of that. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Now, thanks to God who always causes us to triumph. Always Hallelujah. victory. Uh, this is uh, a word of encouragement to all of us. I mean, we don't have to put up with junk. We don't have to put up with the attacks of the enemy, whatever the enemy brings against us, against our mind, against our body, against our finances, against, against our, our family. family. We don't have to put up with any of that. You realize that there's an answer in the scriptures. Hallelujah. Whatever your situation is there is an answer to it that will meet your need that will solve your problem it's always in the scriptures now don't think somebody else is going to bring it to you you search it out you yeah, find the solution yeah. let it be revealed to you by the holy spirit so when the word of God is revealed to you it becomes a fire to you it ignites and and uh, increases the fire within you. So we need to have verses like that that will set us on fire and keep us on fire. And it's our responsibility to be on fire for the Lord. Now, he is, God is a consuming fire. That is a, I mean. Hebrews 12, 29. But Jesus said, the Father and I are one. That's John 10, verse 30. So the God, the Father, is a consuming fire. Jesus said the Father and I are one, so that makes Jesus a consuming fire. That makes fire. the Word a fire. And Jesus and the Word are one, and so the Word is a fire, but we saw that in Jeremiah. 
My word is a fire and a hammer. I love and so that. the word is a fire. Jesus is a fire. God is a fire. Hallelujah. His ministers are, are flames of fire. fire. I believe that you are a, a minister of God and you are a flame of fire. Amen. He has given you the ministry of reconciliation oh, oh, that makes you a minister of God. And that and his ministers, you can look it up in Hebrews, uh, says that his ministers are flames of fire. You begin to see yourself as a flame of fire. It, and it's your responsibility to keep that fire burning, burning hot and bright. The light of it being Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you for being here today. I want you to be encouraged. This is a, 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 word, a word of encouragement. You know, our God is a consuming fire, and he's not going to put up with lukewarm people. He said, I'm going to reject them violently. I'm going to, to, to vomit them out of, my mouth. out of my mouth. I'm going to reject them. So none of us want to be lukewarm. Let's stay on fire for the Lord. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, this, this message is a great encouragement uh, for me. Uh, because the, the enemy uh, tries to come and bring worry and doubt and unbelief and, and pains in our body. Uh, and when I think about uh, there, is a, there is a verse in the Bible uh, that I can use and it will trouble uh, my troublers. And however, you know, we... Um, we were raised up and in, 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 in churches and, and, uh, they told us that we had to accept, uh, if we got sick or we got the flu or we got a bad cold, or if we got, uh, our muscles started hurting or whatever pain or disease that we had to accept that. And just live with it. Because they didn't know where it came from. Because they didn't know that it came from the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Amen. Demonic forces. Demonic forces. Dark forces. And so when Brother Fred and I uh, were told that our daughter was going to die, uh, then that's when we began to search the scriptures. We began to find out that he still heals today. We begin to find out about uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and, and speaking in tongues and how powerful uh, that is. We began to, to see in the scriptures that, that we could be uh, more than conquerors, uh, that we could be victor, victorious in everything. And, and that's what the word of God says. And the word of God is the truth. And, uh, and it, it helped us uh, to uh, go forward uh, and to, to stir up uh, that fire uh, that is within us. Because if God is in you, then you've got a fire there. And we know that when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Father comes in, the Word of God comes in, and the Holy Spirit comes in. Hallelujah. And so you've got all three of those in you, and there, therefore, you have a fire within you, like Brother Fred said. And so, I don't know, this has stirred me up tonight. And I pray that it has stirred you up 